Right on. Uh, come on, anybody just, you're just grateful for this church. You're grateful for what God's doing. You're grateful to be in the house of God tonight. Right on. You, you can be seated. You could be seated, radiant church. I love this church, by the way, and I really do um, uh, love your pastor. Um, there are, uh, honestly, uh, few, few people that I just respect their leadership game more and respect their pastoring more than uh, Pastor Aaron Burke. I, I really believe that uh, if you're at this church, you're blessed. If you're at this church, um, I, I think you're... you're uh, in the midst of a wave of a pretty special thing that God's doing across Central Florida. And, uh, and I just think you ought to be grateful for it. Uh, I think you ought to be encouraged by it. And sometimes it, it's helpful to have somebody maybe that's not from, you know, from the crew come in and tell you how amazing it is. And that's not rhetoric. That's not something that I do at the beginning of a message. Um, uh, as you know, was said, I, I've been coming to this church literally, um, I, I preached like the first year of this church. It's probably my sixth time or so that I've been here from, a, from Sundays to, um, uh, to first Wednesdays. Uh, but it really is an honor uh, to be doing ministry alongside you guys across Central Florida. I just believe God's doing something in Central Florida, man. I believe that God's up to something. And um, churches like this and churches like ours and other churches that I know in the Orlando area, it's just God's doing something, and it's pretty cool to be a part of. And, uh, and I just wanna encourage you, no matter where you're at, from the front of the room to the back of the room, maybe watching uh, online, uh, wherever you're at, uh, I would just ask uh, for you just to take another step in your engagement in Radiant Church. Just wherever you're at, wherever you are. And some of you, it's like, you're probably already hyper involved. You are, but, but here's what I found. This is something we say to our crew all the time. There's more in you. There's just more in you. Uh, and, uh, and I just wanna encourage you, just wherever you're at, just take the next step. Take the next step in serving. Take the next step in giving. Take the next step in sowing. Just wherever you're at, take the next step. Because uh, what I found to be true about life is that I don't have to be a superstar. I don't have to be that talented. I don't have to be that gifted. All I have to keep doing is take the next step. And, uh, and I'm telling you, man, if you do that, you will turn around after some years of just taking the next step and go, wow, God has done much. And so just really, really believe that was for somebody. Well, um, I don't know. Okay, okay. I have 24 minutes and 22 seconds, 21 seconds, 20 seconds. Okay, right, okay. So I'm going to jump into it, but before I do, a lot has changed in, in my life. Uh, a lot has changed. Um, uh, uh, what's really cool is some of you, maybe you know that I'm married to somebody named Christina, and she's really the better half. She is the better preacher, I'll tell you that. And, uh, and if you're like a lady, uh, you need to be in the room. My wife's actually coming up here to preach at your guys' ladies, ladies ministry coming up. You're going to want to be in the room. Uh, my wife has, I call it the crying anointing. Like she preaches at our church and everybody's bawling. We're all bawling. So she has the crying anointing on her. And so uh, you're gonna wanna be in the room for that. And then also, um, coming up on six months, it'll be, uh, it'll be six months. We had twins uh, about six months ago. And I think we have a picture. I, I don't know if we have a picture. So, so those are our twins. So those are our twins. So, so on the right, on the right there, um, uh, that is Justice Andrew Guard. That is my little, not so little boy. I call him Hetty Murphy. <laughs> I keep telling him, like, boy, you're going to grow into that head. You are, Domer Simpson, you are going to grow into that head. I'm believing. I'm, that's a 6'5 point guard in the making right there. I'm believing. Lord, Shandalai, do what you can, Lord. Uh, um, uh, um, that was a fake tongue. Don't worry. Did, like if you're non-Pentecostal, don't worry. That was a fake one. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Pastor Aaron. On the left, on the left there, uh, that is the little girl that has my heart. That is Adriana Grace Guard. Adriana Grace. We call her Addie Grace for short. And, uh, they are amazing. So, um, so we're sleeping tons feeling great. Uh, it's just, uh, uh, what an amazing season it is. And uh, I just want to say, man, if you're a parent, you are a hero. Like, like even the mediocre parents in the room, you're amazing. Like, like if you're like, eh, I'm okay. You're amazing. Uh, this thing is harder than people act like it is. Uh, and so, uh, so just been an amazing, amazing season for us. Well, open up your Bible with me, if you would, to Isaiah. Ooh, this is getting serious on first Wednesday, Isaiah chapter 43. And, and I, I want to, I want to preach a little thing uh, that I call a new fight, a new fight. Anybody else like me, you're tired 
of fighting the same thing? Come on, anybody else tired of the old fight? Anybody else tired from the same thing you've been fighting for the last five years, for the last 10? Anybody like, I'm looking for a new fight. I'm looking for a new thing. I'm looking for a new challenge. I'm looking for a new adversary. Uh, I, I don't know about you, but I, I wanna move on to new fights, but you can't move on to new fights. You can't move on to new battles until you arrest some old things. And, and I wanna preach out of Isaiah chapter 43, uh, starting in verse one, it reads like this. It says, but now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I love this. I called you by name and you're mine. When you pass through the waters, I'm gonna be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give you Egypt as your ransom, Cush and Seba in exchange for you because you are precious in my eyes and honored and I love you. I give men in return for you, people in exchange for your life. Fear not for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give up and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made, Bring out the people who are blind and yet have eyes, who are deaf yet have ears. And then I wanna skip down to verse 18. It says, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing what? A new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and I will make rivers in the desert. Come on, let's pray together tonight over the preaching of God's word. God, I pray that you would ready our hearts. God, that you would open up our minds. And Lord, I pray for that one thing right now, God, that one thing that is holding us back, that one thing that has been an impediment in our lives for quite some time. Lord, I pray you'd give us a new strength, that you would give us a new vision for our life. God, that we might move forward with authority and power. In Jesus' name, we all said amen and amen. Thanks, don't go far, you sound amazing. Come on, give it up for the team. Don't you love the team? Love the team. Anybody else in here like me, like you wished that you were further down the road than you really are? Anybody, in fact, anybody else in here, you thought that you'd be further down the road than you are? Maybe you gave your heart to Christ like five years ago or 10 years ago or 20 years ago and you thought, man, in 20 years, here's where I'll be. And 20 years later, you're going, man, if I'm being honest, I thought I would be further down the road than I am currently. I, I, I have that thought all the time. And this is why I wish life was like a video game. I, I actually wish life was like a video game for a lot of reasons. Uh, here's one of the reasons why I, I really wish life uh, was like a video game is uh, if you're playing you know, certain games, there's these things called checkpoints. There's these things called checkpoints. And once, once you get to a certain space, if your little character like dies, you don't go all the way back, right? You, you go back to the last checkpoint that you passed, right? I mean, I, I wish life was like a video game. I, I wish life was like a video game because um, when, my, when, my, when I make a mistake or when my guy dies, there's not too many consequences. You know what I mean? Like, in fact, some of you, 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 you'll like lose a game at like Madden or something like that and you just like reset it. You don't even count it on your record. You just like reset, right? right? You, you know, you just, there's not a lot of consequences when you make poor decisions when you're playing video games. The also thing, the also thing that, I, that I love about video games is that if I'm playing and my, my person dies and I go back to the checkpoint, Every time that happens, I learn a little more at how to beat that particular level. Right? But here's the reality. Life is not like a video game. <laughs> it's not. In, in fact, there are some dire decisions that you can make that you don't just go right back to a short checkpoint. There are some decisions that you and I can make, and it can set us back years. It can set us back years. The other reason why life is not like a video game is the consequences are big. In fact, the older you get, the more people that are banking on you, 
and the things that used to be kind of funny when you were 15, 16 years old, now at 26 and 36 and 46 is actually now devastating. And I think this is really tragic to me. A huge reason why life is not like a video game is there are many times where we make poor decisions and we learn nothing. We learn nothing. And what we continue to do is we continue to hit our head on the same stuff over and over and over again. And sometimes it's hard to see in us, but easy to see that in other people, isn't it? <laughs> Come on, it, 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 you ever like, like observe somebody else, not you, but like other people? And are, are you ever making an observation and you just see somebody doing the same dumb thing over and over and over and over again? And you're like, why don't you just Stop it. In, in, in fact, um, uh, you know, we'll have people that set up meetings with me from our church and, and they'll come to me and they're like, hey, pastor, can you give me some advice? And I'm like, are you sure, right? Because I'm a mediocre pastoral care person. I'm mediocre at it at best. I'd give myself like a four, a five when I've gotten like a full eight hours, but that's about as good as I get. Because people come to me and they're like, hey, I need some advice. And I'm like, cool, I can give you some counsel, but like, this is just the way I do it. I give it straight, no chaser. Like no Gatorade after the shot. Like it's just, like some of you, you're like, what does that mean? <laughs> the rest of you, you're like, I, I. <laughs> you have a pass, that's okay, but we're on a journey. I said no chaser. Some of you are like, what does that mean? Christian school, you grew up in Christian school. <laughs> you don't even know what that means. But I'm like, this is how I give advice. So you, ju you just gotta know, I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna tell it to you. I'm just gonna tell it, tell it to you straight. And can I say like 99% of the time, I just wanna be like, knock it off. Just like stop doing that thing. Bad, no, stop doing it, right? And I'm great at that for other people. I see other people and I'm like, they should just stop that. that that's harming them, stop it, right? That's, I'm great at it. But for myself, it's like, man, it seems like it's the hardest thing in the world to just stop things that I know are not for my benefit. And I'm not just frustrated because I'm not perfect. I'm frustrated because I keep dealing with the same thing year after year after year. You are not frustrated because you are not perfect. None of us are perfect. But where frustration comes from is when we keep hitting our head on the same thing. And it's that thing that is not even allowing you to move on to the other things that would allow your life to go next level. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to get whatever that one thing is in your mind. Because here's what I know. It's not that you only have one thing. It's just there is one thing that is occupying all of your mental space that is not allowing you to move on to other things. And it's actually created the delusion that you just have one thing. In fact, I bet some of you in this room right now, you actually believe if I could just stop this habitual sin, I could leap tall buildings with a single bound. And can I just encourage you, you came to First Wednesday to hear this. You have a lot of things. You don't just have one thing. You have many, many things. In fact, I was talking to, talking to a young adult at our church. Now, a huge population of our church are 18 to 30 year old single people. That is a huge population of our church. And so I tell people all the time, I'm like, if you can't figure it out at Grace City, you can't figure it out anywhere. I'm like, I'm like setting this thing up on a T for you. If, you're like, if you can't like, you know, figure it out here, then you might as well walk away from Jesus and start going to the club because I cannot help you out. Where are the single people at in the room right now? Lift up your hand, lift up your hand, keep your hand up, keep your hand up, keep your hand up, keep your hand up, look around, look around, keep your hand up, look around, look around, look around, put your hand down. Put your hand down. And I was, talk, I was talking to this young man, I was talking to this young man, and, and, uh, and he was devastated at this girl that just broke up with him. She, ju she just broke up with him, and he was heartbroken. Now, I gotta be honest, uh, as I get older, and I've been married now uh, for 13 years, and as I get older and I have these conversations, I laugh on the inside whenever I have these breakup conversations. I laugh on the inside. Again, I told you, I'm a, like four or five pastoral care person out of 10, okay? Like, so, so whenever I'm talking to some 21-year-old, and they're like... <laughs> <laughs> she broke up with me. I'm like, bro, you won't remember her name in like six weeks, okay, bro? Like, you're gonna be A-OK. -okay. Just come to like a 6 p.m. at Grace City. You're like, oh, hey, girl, like, and you're fine, right? 
You're fine. But I said, what happened? I was like, it seemed like it was going good. What happened? Like what happened in the relationship? And, and, and they were doing a long distance relationship and she said she just couldn't do the distance anymore. She just couldn't do the distance. Now, me and Christina, like we did a long distance relationship for most of our dating and most of our engagement. We did a long distance relationship. So here's what I know. When people break up, it is not because of distance. <laughs> so I told them that. <laughs> I'm a four or five. I'm a four or five. And I said, you, you, you really think that's what it was? Like, you think that's what it was? Well, yeah, you don't? No, I don't actually. See, see, it's, it's interesting. He, he thought that, that it was just this issue, but I'm sure that in the relationship, there were a whole host of other issues. And so, so here, here's a thought I, I, I want you to get in your, maybe in your heart right now is this, it is that by this time next year, right? What are we, we're in April, right? I don't even know what month it is. I just had six month old. I don't know what, it, see, see, I don't even know. Stop it. A six month old, whatever, right? This is what I would encourage you. Throughout the rest of the year, this would be my point, my only point. I only preach one point messages because it's all I can remember, but, but, but here it is. Is that this time next year, I will be fighting new battles. Come on, this time next year. What if you just settled it in your spirit? I'm gonna be fighting new battles. It's not that you will be fighting no battles because you have a lot of issues. I can tell by looking at some of you. You know what I mean? Like, I, like come on, I... Come on, I got a lot of issues. Got a lot of issues. But what if you and I got serious about one thing? What if we just got serious? Hey, this one thing that is hindering my relationship with God and is hindering my relationships and is, is causing my confidence to be sapped and, and, and it's causing me to draw back when I should be pushing forward. What if that one thing that has been haunting me for two years and five years and 10, what if I could just arrest the one thing. Instead of focusing on, I think sometimes we're, we're focused on like four or five different things, but we gotta know how kind of the enemy attacks. And I, I wanna read again real quick Isaiah 43. I just wanna read the first couple of verses. It says, but now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, I love this, fear not, for I have redeemed you, I've called you by name, and you are mine. See, you gotta constantly know that you've been redeemed. You know, one of the things that the enemy's trying to do, the enemy's always trying to sap your strength and crush your spirit. In fact, there's this really uh, awful practice that takes place all over the world. And, and it has to do with um, how they tame, uh, and that is a kind word, wild elephants. It's how they capture wild elephants. And what they will do is they will capture these unbelievably majestic creatures and, and they will capture them. And what they will do is they will put them in these cages that are too small for them. And what they will literally do is they will literally take like essentially little spears and, and, and spear these elephants. And they will keep, the, keep them in these tiny cages for like days out of time, days at a time. And what they are trying to do because they are trying to take a wild elephant and, you know, pretty much, you know, hold it captive so it can be in a zoo or something like that. And what they do is they are trying to crush the spirit of the elephant. In fact, it's called elephant crushing is the practice that it's called. Because what they know is, is that if they can crush the spirit of the elephant, then they can take this thing that is wild and they can hold it captive. You want to know what repetitive sin does in your life? It crushes your spirit. It crushes your spirit. Ask me how I know, right? Because I've had it. What repetitive sin does is it saps your confidence. What repetitive sin does is, is it just has a way of crushing your spirit and it holds you back from doing the things that God has called you to do. Wrestling with the same thing over and over and over again can crush your spirit. And there is a process to this. And there's a process in a way in which the enemy works in your life and in my life. In fact, I, I remember the first time that I ever put my arm around Christina. I remember. I remember the first time I ever put my arm around Christina. I, I, I remember I, I had my arm around her, and I was like, I'm doing it on the inside. <laughs> on the inside. And, and, I ha, and I had my arm around her. 
But, but after like about 45 minutes, my arm started to fall asleep. Come on, and, and isn't it the worst too when you have like a body part like fall asleep? Because then when it comes back to life, it is a painful process, right? You know what I mean? It, and, and, and so my arm started to fall asleep, but here's what I was not going to do. I was not going to move my arm. That was not going to happen. And, and, and so, so I had my arm around Christina, and then, and then she got up to go get like a snack, and we were watching a movie, and, and when she got up, I literally like moved my arm. I could barely move my arm, and I just start going like this. <laughs> and I'm trying to get the feeling back in my arm. And, and you wanna know where the, kind of how sin works? This is what the Bible says. The Bible says that desire gives way to sin, right? So n- nothing, so, so we know that sin and desire are two different things. So it says that desire gives way to sin. And then it says, sin, when it is fully matured, when it is fully grown, when it has had time to incubate and grow, desire gives way to sin. And then when sin matures, it says that it gives way to death. And the way that the enemy works in your life, in my life, is this. Uh, we, we, we commit that infraction. And, and for some of you, it, it might be an issue of anger. It, it might be something, maybe anger was modeled in your home, and you can't shake it, and you've wanted to shake anger. You don't want to live your life angry. You don't want to live your life blowing up. You don't want to, and by the way, anger is not an external thing. Anger is an internal thing. So when I say anger, I'm not even talking about the obvious. Some of you wrestle with anger on the inside. You have a rage on the inside. It causes you to lose sleep. And, and, and some of you, it's anger. For, for some of you, it's just greed. Your stuff has a hold of you. And you've been saying for the last five years, this is the year that my, that my stuff doesn't have a hold of me. And I'm, I, I'm just, and, and, and I take jobs be, based on money, not based on calling. And, and, and I think about money too much. And, I, and, 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 I, I just, and, and I'm not generous. And I'm not, and, and for some of you, it's, it's you know, the area of how you're handling your sexuality. And some of you, it's like, you just can't help. You're like pathological liars. Some people have a coffee, you have a lie. <laughs> Come on, I know, I, I know people like this where, where it's like, wow, that's an interesting. Some of you, it's like you're stealing stuff and like you'd be embarrassed and, and, and it's interesting. And what happened, this, this is what happened to you. What happened is you committed that infraction and the first time you felt bad, you felt bad. And, and especially if you're a Christian and, and you have any sort of sense of the spirit of, of conviction and that kind of stuff, you felt bad. The second time you felt bad. And the third time, you feel bad. The fourth time, you knew you should feel bad. And the fifth time, you're trying to stir up feeling bad. And after a while, you only have a head knowledge that you should feel bad, but you actually don't feel bad. Why? Because your heart has been calloused in that area, and that desire gave way to sin and that sin in your life has fully matured, and now it is death. So what if tonight you got the feeling back? What if tonight you got the feeling back? What if tonight uh, uh, you started shaking out your arm and you started saying, look, I, I want to get the feeling, I want to get the sensitivity back in what I watch in my entertainment. I want to get the sensitivity back. And I, I'm not like some old school preacher, like, you know, yeah, watch whatever you want to watch. But it's amazing. Desire gives way to sin. And sin, when it has time to incubate, man, when it has time to grow, when it, when it has air to breathe, it gives way to death. But you gotta know, fear not, God has redeemed us. Anybody grateful for the redeeming power of God, that God has redeemed us? I love that. And then in verse three, it goes on to say, hey, you've been redeemed. And then what I love is it goes through this huge list of inheritance. It, it goes through what land that God is giving them it, because we're precious in his eyes and we're honored and he loves us. He gives, you know, I give men in return for you, people in exchange for your life. Uh, he says, I'm gonna say to the north, give up. I'm gonna say to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from afar, my daughters from the ends of the earth. What if I told you that everything you overcome carries with it a new inheritance? Everything you overcome, every habitual sin, every sin that you overcome, it carries with it a new inheritance. Every, every level that you and I get to move to, man, there is a new 
inheritance. In fact, um, I'm, I'm not a big fan. I do it every once in a while. But um, where are like the runners at? Let me see your hand. You're a runner in the room. Like you run for fun. Like ain't nobody chasing you. You don't have a basketball in your hand. Let me see your hand. Let me see your hand. Like, yeah, yeah. You put tape in weird places that it doesn't do anything. It just looks cool. Come on, if I see one more hot pink circle tape with three lines, I'm like, that's doing nothing for your shoulder. Stop lying. That's doing nothing. I, I don't want to see that. I was talking to a runner in our church in uh, um, Lakeland. There's a huge like running community. It's a weird cult. It's a weird thing. I'm trying to <laughs> cast that demon out of our city. And, and, uh, um, and I was talking to this runner, and, and this runner comes up to me, and he's like, Oh, hey, pastor, like, I know you kind of run every once in a while. I'm like, yeah, if I can't find like a hoop game or like a, you know, like a tennis match, then okay, I'll run if I have to break a sweat. And he goes, okay, hey, you have to do this. You have to check out this app, right? Come on, I call these people app guy. Come on, you know app guy, he's always showing you an app. And, uh, and so app guy got me and, and he was a runner. He was running app guy, okay? And he cornered me in our church. He got me. I was like, oh, man, this is, this is why I stay in the green room. No, I'm just kidding. What? <laughs> and app, app guy got me, right? And he said, hey, 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 you need to download this app. And I said, well, well what does it do? Because I already have an app that tells me my pace and, and tells me my distance. I said, well, what? Well, no. He goes, no, this is like the best one out there uh, because you, you know, it does all this kind of stuff. Explain to me all this stuff it does. And then the big selling point was, he goes, and you can get like badges with this. You can get like little badges with this. Like little, like little rewards. Like give you, so if you run X amount of miles in a week, if you run X amount of miles in a month, you can get badges. Which begged the next question that I had for him. So what do I do with said badges, like what? <laughs> like, can I redeem them for anything of substance? Or is like a physical trophy I can put on my mantle or it's just like, it's a trophy on my phone and in my heart, like. <laughs> I was very confused how he was so hyped. I, I go, so, are you, so you have a lot of badges? Oh, pass. Begin to explain to me all of his badges. It is amazing to me what you and I do for very temporary, very earthly things. It, it, it's amazing. And we all do it. We, we, we all have things that, oh man, if I do this, and I, but like every sin that you conquer, there is a new inheritance to it. There is a new level. There, there are more people counting on you than you think there are. There are more people that need you to have a spiritual confidence that comes when you overcome some sin. Your work environment needs you to overcome that sin. Not so you're perfect, but just so you can walk with a holy confidence that just says, man, I know God has given me authority, right? Not just to be forgiven of my sin, but to overcome sin. That's where our spiritual authority comes from. And it's amazing to me that, man, there is so much inheritance because there's so much more to this than going to heaven. Come on, there, there's some inheritances that you and I that are right there for the taking if you and I could just arrest the one thing. I wanna have the team come up because I sound more spiritual. And on verse 18, I wanna finish up here because I have four minutes and 21 seconds, 20 seconds, 19 seconds, right? Okay. <laughs> Isaiah 43, 18. It reads like this, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. You and I spend a lot of time considering the things of old. You and I spend a lot of time rehearsing what we hope could have been, what we wish would have been. We spend a lot of time remembering the things of old, but we can't do that. Why? Because we need to make space for the new. He says, behold, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I love this. I will make a way in the wilderness rivers in the desert. It is so hard to see clearly when you're in the middle of something. Like when you're in the desert, it's hard to see a road. It's just just hard. It's hard to see clearly when you're in the middle of something. Now, I grew up and... uh, there are two types of kids when you're growing up. There are, um, like, maybe at, like, you know, the fair or things like that. There are game kids and ride kids. There are game kids. Now, let me see your hand. You're a ride kid. Let me see your hand. You're a, you're a, you're a ride person. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay. 
uh, where are the game kids at? I, I was a game kid. I was a game kid. I kept my feet on the ground. I was a game kid. I'm like, I want to I pop the balloons and, you know, grab a little poster and, like, you know, I want to shoot the water in the clown's mouth till the balloon pops. Like, like I, 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 was, I was a game kid. And I get motion sickness real easily. I don't, I don't know about anybody else, but, like, I, I have, like, the weakest stomach ever. Like, it is war for me brushing my teeth. Uh, anybody else like me? You're just like, uh, 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 like, like. I'm serious. It's like a gag fest every, every time I brush my teeth. The incredibly weak stomach. Get motion sickness really easy if stuff is spinning. Like sometimes I don't even like to move around too much on stage because I'm like, well, what's happening? Like, you know, right? I, I just, I get motion sickness really, really easily. But, but when I was about 14 years old, you do a lot of things for girls. <laughs> and if you're single 25, you also do a lot of things for girls. You know what I mean? Right? right? <laughs> We've come so far. No, you haven't. You really haven't. <laughs> and I remember I went on this ride. I, I remember I went on this ride, and it was called the Enterprise. How do you know this ride? But it was a ride where, where you get on. I don't know, you probably went on this ride. It's probably called something else. But where I came from, it was called the Enterprise. And you'd get on this ride, and you're all kind of facing each other, and you're standing in a circle. And this demonic activity just starts spinning around. Remember this? And, and just starts spinning around. And then, and then there comes a moment where you're spinning around so fast that the floor can drop out. And I'm spin, I don't know what this ride was. I get on and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like looking at that girl over there. And I'm like. I'm like, what does this do? They're like, oh, it just kind of spins around. I'm like, in a circle? <laughs> and that thing starts spinning, man. It starts spinning. The floor drops out, right? And, and, and everybody else there is like loving it, right? All, all the other, ooh, that one hurt. Okay, so, so everyone else there is loving it because the floor drops out. And, and, and so it's all gravity just holding you up against the wall. And everyone else is like, oh, and they're lifting up their feet, right? And, and I'm there, and I'm like sweating. Like, come on. You, you know you get that sweat, and then you do the throat check? Some of you don't know what I'm talking about. You know the throat check where you swallow, and you feel the lump? You're like, oh, this is not good. You do the throat check. Like, I feel it, I feel it, I feel the lump. And you're sweating, but you're not running, right? Like, like th this, is, this, is, this, is, this is bad. And that thing is spinning around. I mean, spinning around. And I actually even forget, forgot why I originally got on the ride. I didn't even remember that I got on there for the girl. I'm there, and, and so I didn't even know how I originally got on this ride. And then it seemed like it went forever. It, it, I mean, it seemed, because when you're in the middle of something... It is hard to see where it started. And it's really difficult to see the end. And some, of, some of us in this room, I would, I would even venture to say maybe all of us in this room, you've been dealing with this one thing that you've been thinking about since I've been talking. And you're not even sure how you got on this ride. You're not even sure. Some of you in the room, you're so messed up sexually because you started having sexual experiences when you were like 10 years old. And, and, and now you're like, why am I this way? You can't even remember how you got on the ride. You, you just know you're, you're spinning. You're just spinning. Some of you, you saw some images you shouldn't have seen when you were 12 years old. When you were 15 years old, and you're like, I don't even know how I got on this ride. I don't remember what originally got me on this ride. Uh, some of you, you're greedy because you grew up in poverty, and so you have a poverty mindset. And so you want to hold on to your, you don't even know why you're greedy. It's because you never maybe saw your parents be generous. 
I don't even know how I got on this ride where my stuff just has a, has a hold of me, but, but, but I know I'm on it. Some of us in this room, like I said, we're angry. We're frustrated. We're annoyed at people that don't look like us or talk like us or think like us. And for some of you, maybe it was because of how you were treated when you were in middle school. I don't even know how I got on this ride. How'd I get on this thing? And it seems like there's no end to it. it seems like there's no getting off it. And, and what I, I preached this message to our church a few months ago. And I'm gonna preach it, and I'm gonna kind of close it the way I closed it with us because, you know, again, I feel attached to this place. I've been here a bunch of times, and, and I, I really do genuinely care about this place. And, and my thought would be, well, what if 700 people in the room just decided? I know I'm still gonna have stuff this time next year. But I'll be fighting some new battles. And this thing, I'm at least gonna get it under arrest. It's not that you won't have to be mindful of it ever again. It's just, you, you, let's just focus on one thing tonight. Yeah, we got other stuff. We got, we got all kinds of stuff, man. We got issues, right? But what's the one thing right now in your life that if it changed, could make all the difference. Come on, what's the one thing right now in your marriage that if it changed, oh, we got a lot of things to work out. I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm sure you do. But just the one thing right now. Come on, somebody in, in your relationship with your kids. Come on, what's the one thing right now? It might, it, it might be the way you talk to them. Man, this could be the one thing. My young people, your relationship with your parents. What's the one thing? And I wrote down literally just really simple handles. Just, just five things. Number one, I would encourage you in this. Get someone on the journey with you. Get someone on the journey. Listen, not everybody should know everything, but somebody should know everything. I'm a firm believer in that. You don't got to broadcast it to the whole church. You don't got to put it out on Instagram. But, but somebody needs to know everything. Come on, we, we live in a world today where people end their life. And everybody in their group go, what? Because there wasn't at least one person that knew everything. You gotta have one person in your life. And can I, let me just tell you, you might have gotten burned by that in the past. That's fine, but here's what I always ask myself. Whenever I've gotten burned by something, I always go, yeah, but what's the alternative? What are my options? Close down, not do that ever again? Or go, bump it, I'm gonna try again. Maybe I picked the wrong person. Maybe I didn't handle it right, but one person. So get somebody on the journey with you. Be honest with them. Number two, get a plan. Maybe even work with that person. Get a plan. What I mean by that is, man, uh, there needs to be a rededication of some spiritual disciplines. You need, to, you need to have a plan. There needs to be some practical steps that you take. Hey, 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 hey what, are, what are some things? Can, can I just say, some of you, like, social media is just messing you up. Like, a practical step would be just, like, delete, delete. I, like, I, like I, I got off Facebook, like, seven years ago. I got off Twitter, like, about a year ago, and I'm, like, like this close to getting off. I'm hardly ever on Instagram. Why? Because it's just, I mean, it's not good for my soul. I guess whatever. I'm sure it helps people and all that stuff, but, like, I don't know who. <laughs> come on, I mean, come on, if we were doing real inventory, like how much of your life is dramatically better because of social media? Anybody? Like, okay, I've got like four friends on there, cool. But, but, but some like practical steps of going, okay, okay, th this is my area, this is my issue. Uh, number three, you need to lean on the grace of God. This is how we overcome. You need to lean on the grace of God. You can't do it on your own strength. We sang this tonight, right? How did it go? I'm not enough, but less is more. That's not one of the lyrics, but less is more. How's it go? Just sing it over us for a second. Not enough, unless you come. Come on, that's true, huh? Will you meet me here again? Come on, sing that again. Cause all I want, cause all I want is all you are. 
Come on, you're not enough. And that's okay. Can't do it on your own strength. Come on, you need to lean on the grace of God. Number four, real practical, stay the course. It's worth it. Stay the course. Stay the course. Oh man, this time next year. Yeah, that's why for our church, I gave us like a long runway. <laughs> I didn't even say like next week or like this month. No, like this time next year. Come on, come on, come on. I gave us a long runway. Come on, stay the course. It's worth it. And then number five, fight the next battle when it's time to fight the next battle. Fight the next battle when it's time to, to fight the next battle. I think what happens sometimes is we haven't, even, we haven't gotten this figured out yet. And we're trying to figure this out. Don't worry about figuring this out. Come on, church, can we, can we stand to our feet? And, and here's what I wanna do. The team's gonna sing over us. But, but here's what I want. Maybe with, with no, nah, nah, we're not gonna close our eyes. This is first Wednesday. I thought this was Sunday for a second. I'm like, we ain't closing our eyes. Talking to the church, talking to the heart and soul of the church tonight, right? Talking to the heart and soul of the church. Anybody in here, I, I just want, I just want to see, see your hand. I want you to kind of maybe, maybe even lift up both hands as a sign of surrender. Anybody in here, like right now, you know what that one thing is. I just want you to lift up your hand. Across. You just know what that one thing, you know what it is. Even as I was talking, you're like, man, that's my one thing. That's my, keep, keep your hand up. Keep your hand up. Keep your hand up. Keep, keep your hand And I want to pray over you. And I want to pray, man, we got, we got lots of issues. But I want to pray that, man, this one thing, <laughs> This one thing that has been haunting me, this one thing that pulls out all my insecurities, this one thing that, man, I, I, I don't even really fully believe that there is light at the end of this tunnel. But I just believe by faith that there is. Come on, that one thing that used to be desire, and then it used to be sin, and now it is death over our lives. God, we just pray right now, God, that you would do what only you could do. God, that we would be reminded that we are redeemed, that we would be reminded that there is an inheritance and that we would be reminded tonight to forget the former things. God, to move forward because you are doing a new thing. God, I come against the attacks of the enemy over our life. I come against the strategies of hell. God, right now, God, I loosen the spirit of purity. I loosen the spirit of joy. I loosen the spirit of forgiveness, of kindness, of peace. God, I come against anger in the name of Jesus Christ. God, we ask you to move. God, we come against that one thing. And God, I pray this time next year, God, that we would be different. God, that we would be set apart. Come on, can we lift up our voice and can we declare this? Come on. to sing that again. I love that. Come Holy Spirit, dry bones awaken. Come on, death, right? We're, we're going to get life from death tonight. I, but, but, but I really want to pray. You ever been to the ER like at two in the morning? It is a wild place, man. <laughs> and, 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 and here's what I know about the hospital. Uh, everything is bad, right? When it comes in, everything is bad, but there are some things that are life-threatening. Right? There's something like there's some things you, you, can get, you, you can go in and you can sit in the waiting room for a little bit and, and, and you can wait there 45 minutes and maybe you broke an arm or something like that. And like, okay, you can get in. Uh, but I believe that there are some people here tonight that that one thing, I mean, has you to the brink where like your marriage is about to be over. Or that one thing, maybe it already has caused you to lose a job. Or maybe you got put in jail for that one thing. But, but 
I, I, this, I'm, gonna ask, I'm gonna ask you to be really, really bold. I'm gonna ask you to be really bold. But if that one thing, I mean, has you at the brink, I'm not talking about like, you know, you have a broken finger because it's all bad. But, but I think there's some people here tonight that like, if we don't get you in the room right now, you'll die. Spiritually, like, like, if, we, like if, if we don't get you in the room right now, we, we can't have you wait out in the waiting room. And if that's you, if, if you would just be so bold, if you, if you would just kind of slip up your hand, can, can you just lift up your hand if that's you? You're just like, man, keep your hand up, keep your hand up, keep, keep, keep your hand up. If that's you, you're just like, man, I, I, I need to change like now, like this thing is. And I just want, if there's anybody around you with their hand up, I'm just gonna ask you to put your hand on their shoulders. Just, just keep your hand up, keep your hand up. There's no shame in this, man. We've all been there where you're like, man, that, this one thing, this is like, I don't, I don't have time to wait in the waiting room. I, I, need, I need to get in right now. Come on, and we're gonna sing that bridge one more time, but I just wanna pray. God, I pray right now. Lord, I pray for those that feel like they're on the brink. I pray for those that, oh, they need a breath of fresh air so bad. They need to sense your presence tonight so bad. God, they need dry bones awakened tonight. Lord, Lord, I pray, God, I, I pray for everybody in the room right now, but God, God there's some people, God, that, that have to get in surgery right now. And Lord, I pray that you would do what only you can do. God, no message can do it, no song can do it, no preacher can do it, no friend can do it. God, there are just some things that only you can do. So God, I just pray right now in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, that you would bring fresh life. God, that you would bring a pulse back. God, that we would get the feeling back in our legs and in our arms and in our limbs. God, that you would soften our hearts tonight. I pray the grace of God. I pray the mercy of God. I pray the kindness of God to find these people right now. I pray, God, that they would begin to see a light that they haven't seen in a while. God, I pray they'd see that light at the end of a tunnel.